Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe the world revolves around them and nobody else matters. And in today's episode, we're dealing with Entitled Neighbors. And Opie tells a story about the time they went away on vacation and a Karen neighbor decided to paint their house because it's ugly. So yeah, if you've ever dealt with bad neighbors in your life, this one's for you. I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So this isn't the most entitled story you've read, but there's still some entitlement in it, so enjoy. I own a small home, and recently, I received a promotion at work, and I wanted to celebrate by hosting a small party and having some friends over for a game night and barbecue, my treat. So I sent my invitations, and an acquaintance, my neighbor who lives down the road, told me he has a new girlfriend and asked me if she could come. I saw no issues with that, so I told him to bring her along, but what a mistake that was. A few hours before the party, the new girlfriend, let's call her Karen, texted me, saying she couldn't find a babysitter. I told Karen I was sorry, but I don't want kids at my party, as everyone's gonna be drinking, smoking, and of course, adult talk. Also, all of our friends were stoked to leave their kids at home for once, and just let loose like the old days. She didn't reply, so I assumed she was mad. A few hours later, people show up at the door and we're having fun, until acquaintance and his girlfriend, Karen, arrived with her three kids. I wasn't happy, but I let them in, and I wanted to talk with Karen, so I took her aside. I basically tell her, hey, I told you this was not a party with kids. Karen says, I know, but my kids aren't like other kids. They're well behaved, and I want them to meet everyone, as Josh, her boyfriend, is always talking about his wonderful friends. I just tell her, okay, let the kids play in the spare room. Karen then went on to set up her kids in the room, but soon she came back and she said, Where's the toys for them? You have absolutely nothing in this room for my kids to play with. I was baffled at that and I say, Toys? I don't have any. I don't have kids. She then says to me, Well, how do you expect me to entertain them then? You only have a bed in there. I say to her, You didn't bring anything? She tells me, No, there's always toys wherever I go. I just tell her, Well, I'm sorry, I just don't know what to do. That's when Karen says, Well, I saw in your bedroom that you have a laptop and TV in there, so let them hang out in your bedroom. Hearing her say that, I was speechless, and I say, no, that's my bedroom, I'm sorry, but I can't have kids running around unsupervised in my bedroom, there's too many. She then interrupts me and says, my kids are well behaved, I promise. They'll just sit on your bed and watch TV, they won't touch anything, promise. It's at this point I begin to feel upset, as she was keeping me away from my friends and she made me deal with her issues concerning her kids. So I just stood my ground and I told her to find a solution and that my bedroom is off limits. She gave them her phone to play with. A few moments later, I happened to be outside in the backyard, lighting up a cigarette with a whiskey in hand. And that's when Karen marches out and she says, What do you think you're doing? Are you out of your mind? There's kids here. My kids can see you smoking outside. That's when a friend chimes in and says, well, they weren't supposed to be here, so... And I tell Karen, this is my place. I can kind of do whatever I want, you know? Karen then says, what kind of person are you? You don't give a damn about my kids. You're an effing moron, a child hater. Of course, what she said pissed me off at that point. And I say, you know what? This is my home, my party, my rules, and I'll do whatever the heck I want in here. I've allowed you to come in my my home with your kids. I went with it when nobody else was bringing theirs. But now you're crossing the line. How dare you, as a guest, tell me to not smoke in my home? I'm sorry, but you're not welcome anymore. And that was basically it. Karen and her kids went home, and the funny thing is, she broke up with my neighbor the next day, saying his circle of friends, me mainly, are nothing but horrible people. 
Well, it seems to me like OP's friend dodged a bullet there because clearly his girlfriend was over the top entitled, right? Like the nerve of that woman to come to OP's house with her kids where it's a no kids allowed party and then boss him around like she owned the place. I just find it really funny how again she brings kids to a child free party and then gets mad there's no toys there and that full grown adults are smoking like where is your brain Karen? So I recently moved into a nice house with a good sized yard. The area looks amazing and it didn't have an HOA, no red flags at all. And then after living there for about 4 months I realized two things. Number one. I'm surrounded on all sides by retired people who apparently need to walk into my backyard and strike up a conversation with me anytime they see me in the backyard. Or worse, they'll see me at my kitchen window washing dishes or whatever, and they'll come talk to me. There was once an incident where I invited my family over for a get-together, and those neighbors invited themselves into my backyard and they chatted and helped themselves to s'mores materials. My family did not invite them, and they said several times, this is just a family night. Just zero boundaries on all these guys, it's unreal. Number two, the neighbors all have dogs, but apparently no fences, and they let them free roam, which is problematic for so many reasons in our area of town. Sometimes, the neighbors even bring the dogs to my yard if they catch me bringing my dog out, which pretty much means I have to bring my dog back inside because their dogs don't play nice. So with that, I decide that I could kill a few birds with one stone, and I put up a nice 6 foot tall privacy fence. That'll keep the dogs and the neighbors out. The fence went up a little over 2 weeks ago, and I thought that would be the end of my problems. I put up the typical signs on the gates, the typical keep the gate shut, dog in yard sign, and a no trespassing please sign, very visible and close to the latch. And my goodness, I could not have been more wrong. The second day I had my fence up, I was grilling burgers outside with my dog, thinking I was finally going to have the perfect home. And that's when one of my neighbors opens my gate, and they walked into my yard while saying, I thought I was smelling something good. How have you been? Fix me up a plate. They then sat down in a chair while I was stunned, and they said, I haven't seen you too much lately. With a chuckle, like he was trying to be funny. I didn't realize he had left the gate open until my dog locked eyes with me from across the yard, and then bolted for the gate. Thankfully, he didn't get far. I just tore into the guy, and that's when he said I shouldn't be bothered by neighbors being neighborly. I then made it very clear that if I wanted him in my backyard, that he would actually know, instead of assuming. He obviously got uncomfortable, and I haven't seen him since, thankfully. But that's only one of them. So hoping it was a one-off occurrence, I opted to not put locks on my gate. Because surely someone being that oblivious to social norms was a one-off thing, right? Anyways, I figured I would give my dog more time in the yard and set him up with a nice dog house and give him some messy treats to enjoy the nice weather outside. He was loving it for the 10 minutes I was sitting with him. I then went to do some laundry and to make a few calls, and about an hour later, I can hear some barking and then him whimpering in the backyard. One of my neighbors thought they would let their dog into my backyard to play, and their dog had nipped at my dog and took his treats away from him. And oh boy, I was about ready to get my crowbar, but I decided it would be better for everyone involved if I just grabbed my dog and took him inside. I then put locks on the gate. The next day, I left my dog outside now that I have a locked gate while I ran to the store. I came back to an old guy trying to figure out the lock, and we had a nice chat about reading comprehension, aka my signs that say no trespassing. The doorbell rang this morning, prompting this post. The neighbors had an intervention on my porch, how I should be more welcoming to them, and told me to take my fence down so the dogs could play. I told them I don't want their dogs anywhere near my dog, and while I'm sure they're all great people, I really want my space to be my space. They couldn't comprehend, and eventually, I just shut the door on them. I can't believe I moved here, and I want to sell now. Oh man, if I were in Opie's shoes, I would be quite upset. Like, it's bad enough having one neighbor who's entitled and crosses boundaries, but with Opie dealing with multiple neighbors like this, oh man, I would be telling them to F right off. And seriously, the whole intervention thing on the porch is just super weird, right? Like, how can they not understand 
that it's OP's house and OP wants their own privacy. With that said, I hope that's the furthest they'll take things because you know how entitled people get when they get told no, right? They just ramp it up and take it to the next level. And guys, I have read so many stories that honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if OP went away on vacation and came back with no fence around their property anymore. Wouldn't that be something? So here's the story. My house is on a corner lot, and two years ago, a newlywed couple moved into the one house that's right beside mine. Little did I know, they would be the worst Karen neighbors ever. Right away, they start making weird comments about the color my house was painted, which was yellow, and then soon switched to outright demanding that I paint it a different color. Now, the thing is, my house was painted yellow when it was built. I like the color, and we don't live in a neighborhood with an HOA, so there's no bylaw against it or anything. My neighbors have called the police on me about it, as well as the city, both of whom told them to pound sand because I hadn't done anything wrong, and there was nothing they could do. Well, after that, it just got worse, as they tried suing me in court because of my house. The case was of course thrown out, and they had to pay my legal fees. Well, after that, they decide to get our other neighbors together to form a homeowners association, in hopes that eventually I could be forced to paint my house a different color. Our neighbors told them to pound sand, and they've basically alienated themselves from everyone in the neighborhood at this point. With all that said, I recently had to go out of town for something. I was gone for two weeks. When I got back two days ago, my house was gray. Seriously, I almost drove past it because I'm so used to my yellow house. I knew immediately who was responsible, but when I went over and knocked on their door, no one answered. The neighbor from across the street came over and showed me pictures he took of the painting company setting up and doing the work. He said that he and another neighbor called the police, but the painting company had a valid work order and they had been paid, so the police can't do anything. And because they were paid to do the work, they said they had to do it, to avoid being sued. I then called the painting company to get a copy of the work order, and it was the name of Mrs. Jane Smith, and it was paid in cash. They said a red-headed woman and her red-headed husband came to the company to hire them. My neighbors are both redheads. They said they would be out of town, and they would like their house painted while they were gone. They then gave the painting company pictures of my house, taken from the street. I have cameras at my front and side doors, and upon checking them, my neighbors never set foot on my property at any time. So they can't be charged with trespassing, and they didn't do the painting, which was actually done properly. When I called the police, they reiterated that since the painters were hired, and they had a valid work order, and they were paid to do the job, they can't be charged with trespassing. They also said they didn't know, and they were acting in good faith, and they didn't cause any physical damage to the house. Also, my neighbors can't be charged with trespassing or vandalism, because they didn't come on my property or touch the house themselves. I don't know if I can sue anyone, because there was no damage or harm done to me or the house. My neighbors have still not answered their door or shown themselves, and I'm pissed off beyond belief because I liked my yellow house, and I can't believe how effing crazy they've been. I wish I could show a court or city council how psycho they've been over this. Does anyone know what I can do to get them to fix this and to paint it back? Holy moly, like this isn't the first time I've read about horrible neighbors despising people's house color, but it is the first where someone's actually done something this extreme, guys. And the fact that the Karen neighbors not only painted OP's house, but that they got away with it has left me dumbfounded, guys. Like, I seriously have no idea what can be done. My only suggestion is to do the exact same thing, OP. Wait until your neighbors are gone, and then pay someone to paint their house like bright pink or something. But yeah, guys, let me know what you would do if you were in OP situation, because this is absolutely wild. At first, I wasn't sure if this was an entitled story, because I think this woman is just plain crazy. But after reading a few of these and listen to some stories, I figured out that crazy and entitled are one in the same. So here's the story. Years ago, this new neighbor of mine kept trying for the better part of a summer to use me as a free babysitter. It started when her kid, who was a really cute, well-behaved 7-year-old, shows up at my door at like 7.15 in the morning. We were all just waking up and getting around, so I told him that my boys weren't ready to play yet and to come back in a few hours. That's when the kid told me his mom had gone to work. 
Now that did seem a bit odd to me, so I brought him inside and tried to call his mom. And this was the time of only landlines. And sure enough, she was gone. So I brought him inside and fed him breakfast. He stayed with us the rest of the day, and he got along well with my two boys, who were 5 and 10. And here's the thing, I only talked to his mom about two times, so I had no idea why she would think this was a good idea. When his mom came home, I walked him over so I could talk to her. I told her to not do that again. I also told her that I would be willing to watch him on occasion if asked first, but not every day. And her response was, well, what else do you have to do all day? You're always at home. And this kind of took me by surprise. I told her that I work at home on commissions. She then rolled her eyes and she told me that that's not a real job. And besides, I was married, so why do I need to work? I just told her, don't do that again. You have teenage kids home for the summer. Have them babysit. She then frowns and says, well, they work. I then said, so do I. I then went home. The next morning at 7.15, the kid shows up again. Once again, I bring him inside and I feed him breakfast and later lunch. Once again, I took him to his home and once again told his mom to please not do that again. She actually tried to tell me that it was my neighborly duty to watch him. And I told her if she sent him over tomorrow, I wouldn't be there because of a doctor's appointment. This is when she says to me that as a babysitter, I should have given her several days notice about this, to which I angrily told her I wasn't a babysitter, and then went home. The next morning, I went to my 7 o'clock appointment, and then did some grocery shopping afterwards and came home around 10 o'clock. When I get home, the poor kid was waiting for me on my front porch. He had been there for 3 hours, and the guy was scared and hungry. That night, when I took the kid home, I was angry. I told her how he was scared and alone. And she actually said that she told me I hadn't given her enough time to find anyone else, and that he being alone was my fault. I then pointed at her and said, I'm not a babysitter, don't send him over again. That night, this woman had her adult nephew call me to scream at me for not being home when his poor aunt dropped her son off that how dare I leave a small child alone like that. I then told the nephew that his aunt knew I wasn't home, so it was her fault he was left alone. I also said that I repeatedly told his aunt to not send the kid over, and that I wasn't a babysitter. This nephew just freaked out at me when I said that, and I hung up on him screaming at me. Now this did work for two wonderful quiet days, and then right back to it. I tried everything, but this woman insisted that it was my neighborly duty to babysit and would tell me as much. Finally, I decide to solve this problem. I would just get a job outside my home. That way, she would have to stop. I land in an interview for a position at the local library, and I was ecstatic. I then told the woman to keep her son home because I arranged for my kids to stay with grandma when I went to the interview. The next morning, I drove to my mother-in-law's house and I took my kids inside. When I went to leave, I found this woman's kid waiting for me, in my car. She had actually followed me there, and she put her son inside my unlocked car, and then zoomed off while I was dropping off my boys. My mother-in-law wasn't the most flexible person in the world, and she adamantly refused to watch an extra kid. I had to cancel my interview, and I was livid. I then toyed with several ideas at this moment. I could take the kid to her job and leave him with her, or I could call the police and CPS. Now, I really wasn't sure how stable this woman's job was, and I didn't want her to get fired. And then, when I went to go call CPS, I chickened out, because it really wouldn't be fair to the boy. Besides, I heard really scary stories about CPS. In the end, I just wait for her to come home. I left the boy at my house with my hubby, and I stomped over to her house, and I met her before she even got out of the car. I then shout at her. I told her she was dense, stupid, moronic, and crazy. I told her she had lost me my job interview, and if she sent my kid over to be watched again, I was gonna call CPS and the police. She then puts her hand on her hip, and in the most naughty tone, she said, Well, if you didn't want to watch him, all you had to do was tell me. And honestly, I really don't know how I kept from punching her right then and there. This comment was so asinine. I just turned on my heels and start stomping home when I saw her husband pulling up. Now, this was the first time I met her husband. He worked a job that only allowed him to be home on weekends. When she saw him, she turned tail and she ran inside the house. 
He then saw that I was upset, and he asked me what happened. So I told him. I told him all of it, especially the incident at my mother-in-law's. And the poor man was shocked. He had been told that I was being paid, and he had been giving her money to pay me. He had no idea at all that this has been going on, and he was very, very apologetic about the whole thing. In fact, he apologized again to my husband when he came over to pick up his little boy. And finally, finally, she stopped sending her kid over. I did hear from the other neighbors that she was bad-mouthing me and warning folks what a horrible babysitter I was, but I took that as a favor. This is one of the few stories I have involving this crazy lady. Her only entertainment in life seems to be seeing how bizarre she can act in this neighborhood. I'm luckier than my other neighbors in the fact that she leaves me alone now, and I'm very happy about that. Man, I hate that OP never called the cops. Like, how is this Karen neighbor going to learn that stuff like that isn't okay? Like, I'm just so sad when I read stories like this. Like, a parent just dropping off their kid at someone's house and drives off. Like, that just makes me so uneasy. Like, so many things can go wrong. Some people should not have kids. I'm a 31-year-old single guy who lives alone in an apartment complex. I've lived there for six years. My neighbor across the hall is a woman around my age. She's lived there for about two years, and we'll call her Katie since I don't know her real name. We exchange hellos, but we're not friendly, which is how it is with most of my neighbors. So the thing is, I don't know how to cook. And due to losing one of my part-time jobs, I don't have as much money for takeout anymore. I'm getting really sick of eating cheap fast food or box mac and cheese. I'm gaining weight, and I never feel great. And this is where Katie comes in. I can always smell her cooking in the hall, and it always smells amazing. I know it's not the other person at the end of our hall, because it's a single old man. I've even complimented it a few times. So I got the idea that I would offer to give her some money each week, to cook a little bit extra, and to bring it over for me at night. My thought process is, she's cooking anyways, and I would have presumably delicious food. So I asked her the next time I saw her, and she looked at me surprised, and she said she couldn't because she's too busy. Which actually didn't make sense, because she cooks almost every day, but okay. The next time I saw her, I asked her if she was sure, and then up the amount I was offering. She said she was sure, and that it was rude to ask, and that she's not a housekeeper for hire, and I should get a housekeeper if that's what I want. She also called me a stranger, even though we've talked in the halls before. Overall, she's made me feel like a big jerk, and I'm really embarrassed for even asking her. She was also acting like I was being creepy, and I wasn't, trust me, she's not my type. I think that asking her to split cooking wasn't completely outlandish. She cooks every day anyways, and it wouldn't be hard to make a little more. So am I the a-hole? So yeah, I'm sharing this ridiculous post because I don't know how OP thinks he isn't the a-hole in this situation. Like, how about cooking your own food, or learning how to cook if you can't, instead of throwing money at someone, and then wondering why they won't cook extra for you. And honestly, I don't know if anybody would agree to this, especially if they're complete strangers and barely know one another. And even if they did, it's such a huge ask, because now you've wiggled your way into their life, and they have to deal with you every single day for who knows how long. It just seems like such a weird question to ask somebody. And this person comments, As a single woman, I would be mortified if a male neighbor approached me like this. Like, you don't even know her name, and you're offended she won't cook extra for you? This is totally creepy and weird. You are the a-hole 100%. And this person says, You are the a-hole. Number one, you're clearly making her extremely uncomfortable. You've caused her to feel like she has to walk on eggshells when leaving and entering her own home. Because a strange man down the hall keeps insisting that she cook for him. What the F? Hell, she might even feel like you're monitoring her movement in and out of the apartment in order to ambush her about cooking for you. Which will obviously creep her out and make her feel uncomfortable in her own home. Number two, why on earth would you think that you're entitled to this person's cooking? Even if she was your spouse, this would be a problem, and you don't even know her. How did you hear her say no and decide to keep pressing the issue? She's calling you a stranger because you are a stranger, and she's telling you no because no. 
And number three, when you said, I know it isn't the other person at the end of our hall because it's a single old man, damn dude, F off with that nonsense. You're a jerk, and you were being creepy, and you should be way more embarrassed than you are. Stop harassing your neighbor, learn to cook, and leave her the F alone. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think. How would you react if somebody came up to you and was like, hey, here's some money, start cooking extra for me. And I expect it every day for dinner. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's in our slash entitled people episode, where a psycho Karen won't stop trying to breastfeed Opie's baby. And it's such a wild, wild story. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.